It's the next level. So what's the move? Same as always. Hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. We got a man down. Sound the Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about the third episode of Marvel's What If on Disney+. Plus. So, this episode is What If the World's... Well, no, not really. What <laughs> If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the synopsis, Steve? What if Loki presented himself to the governments of Earth as king of Asgard using all his diplomacy? See, that is not a good description of this episode, in my opinion. That is a horrible synopsis for this episode. Yes, that's something that happens in the episode, but that's not what the episode's about, right? (laughs) Like, I I remember reading that, and I I, I kept expecting... Loki to come out and it's like 13 minutes into the episode, which is only 30 minutes long before we see him. So it's almost halfway through before we even see Loki. So yeah, that's whoever wrote that synopsis was, I don't know. I don't know if they're trying to misdirect people or what, but yeah, it was, it was more about the, I guess you would call it the mystery of who is killing these people. And yeah, you get it at the end. Yeah. I would, it. I would, I would put it that way. Something like that. Like, like, as Nick Fury tries to assemble his Avengers initiative, someone is killing them off. Boom. Yeah. Boom. There's there's your synopsis. Exactly. You know? Very um, simple. <laughs> you could add oh you could add and Black Widow investigates, maybe, or something like that. But even that doesn't need to be in there. It's, yeah. The the whole Loki <laughs> thing, I was just like, what where what? so anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, what were your initial thoughts about the? I, I just thought it was another great another great episode. You know, I, I love I love the the, the twist. That, that it had, I love, mm-hmm. um, you know, because I, I thought when I first saw, because I didn't remember Iron Man 2, and I'll probably talk about this a couple times during the episode because I tend to repeat myself, I know. Um, I, I didn't remember Iron Man 2, so when Tony, when they pointed to Tony's neck, I was like, oh, is that like a zombie virus? And because when he died, <laughs> when he died, I thought, oh, we're getting the, the zombie episode, and then it wasn't that. So I was like, no. okay, so what is this? And uh, so I, I was I was pleasantly intrigued because I... Because I'm I'm a fan, but I'm not like a super like I haven't super dove into these movies, and yeah. I I need to I need to just just bite the bullet and go back and rewatch them from the beginning to remind myself of all these things because there's a lot of stuff in these what if yeah uh, these what if episodes that mm-hmm. are really tying into a lot of the movies, and I'm sure we'll talk about that as we go through. Oh, definitely, yeah they they do tie in a lot of obscure parts within the the movies, and I like that. I, I noticed that that scene right away, and yeah, I enjoyed it for that purpose, too. I was like, oh, they're really replaying this scene, but they changed it accordingly when I watched um, uh, New Rockstars when they, they, they covered it just that mm-hmm. day, because yeah. they really examined it, and I'm like, oh, wow, that wasn't in that scene? Oh, that wasn't there either. Wow, that's pretty cool, and it, it's it's fun to go through that after you've watched the episode, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Well, for me, this was a surprise to me, and I really loved it. As tragic as it was, I really did enjoy the episode a lot. I love the plot twist at the end. That was I wasn't seeing that coming, but you knew it was Loki trying to do something, and he was basically doing what we think. And uh, I'll go into my thoughts later on about that. But when Hulk exploded, I knew mm-hmm. right away who it was. That was really the that's killer. what that's what cued it into you was Hulk, Hulk exploding. Yeah. How? Why is that? Because. Uh, when they were talking about Endgame or Infinity War and stuff like that back then, way back when, we would always talk about, well, how could you get rid of Thanos? Well, all Ant-Man has to do is just jump inside his ear or his butt or something and just, you know, enlarge himself to explode him. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I could, I could, yeah, I, I could see that, that you could, that you could clue in that it had something to do with, with Ant-Man. Yeah, because yeah. it looked like he was like, it was like nothing could really kill him. 
because bullets will only make him angrier and bigger. And I saw him getting bigger, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe this was... And then when he exploded, I was like, no. Something enlarged inside of him. Yeah. <laughs> but that was... Yeah, that was my thought on that. But, yeah, it, it, it I still enjoyed it nonetheless, and then we still got a Loki. I'm wondering if they're going to tie this particular Loki into how they're doing the multiverse. Because we already saw a bunch of different Lokis in the Loki series. So that would be cool. Yeah, it's it, we'll we'll talk some more about other theories and stuff that got blown out of the water with this one. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we'll move right along right into our top fives. You would do best to kneel before a god. We don't really do that here, no matter who or what you are. I am Loki, crown prince of Asgard, the rightful king of Jotun... <clears throat> Jotunheim and... God of mi mischief. Are you gonna take that? I'm in the middle of something here. Uh, I think it's my turn. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I loved. I, I just loved how how it took place. Kind of. I didn't realize until I listened to another podcast that this week, this five days, is actually covering over the same those three movies: Thor, Iron Man two, and the mm -hmm. Incredible Hulk, which all take place. I didn't realize. I didn't. I guess I was. Again, I, I apologize to the listeners. Troll me if you want. I'm not as huge a fan <laughs> of of I haven't watched and rewatched these movies multiple times. So I didn't realize that those three movies take place in basically the same time period. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When, when when Fury is going out and, and assembling his his Avengers, and so it was really really cool that they they use that kind of. Um, yeah, that format of, of these three movies is kind of what formatted the what if. And we've seen that in the first two episodes. They have – like the first episode had just one movie really mm -hmm. that, it, that, it for, that it formatted from. But then like episode two was kind of Guardians of the Galaxy, but it pulled in a whole bunch of other movies as well. So mm -hmm. it was really it was really cool. And I thought – the first thought I – when the Watcher didn't tell us what moment – was changing, which is a, which is a departure from the first two episodes. The yeah. first two episodes, he tells us right away what the thing is. Well, that is the moment he'll yeah. say or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something something like that. We don't get this. So I was like, okay, so is is the moment when Tony dies? Is it what is it? And I, I really I really like that the show that even at the end of it, when we do figure out kind of what the moment is, the show kind of lets us make our own decision about it. The watcher doesn't tell us. He doesn't come right out and say it was when, because it's obviously it's either when Hope decided to join Shield or when Hope was killed on a Shield mission. One of the, one of those two, which is, yeah. you know, they're closely related. It's one of those two things were the moment that changed everything in this time, because obviously it changed Hank Pym, made him more bitter, and and all the stuff with with Ant Man didn't happen because mm -hmm. we see him in the the yellow jacket suit there at yep. the end. So we 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 realize that all the stuff that we saw from the movies and that was um that would have taken place in between Hank and his daughter in her adult life mm -hmm. never occurred. Yeah, I I really think it had to do with her joining Shield because at that point she never joined anything if you remember the original Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I didn't know is that the Incredible Hulk was around the same time. Mm, okay. That was interesting to me. I'm like, okay, I know Iron Man and Thor are right around, within around the same week, because they, they, you could tell Fury was working on overtime and Coulson mm -hmm. was going all over the place. Right. But, yeah. My number five, well, that would be the elimination of each Avenger and how they do it. I found that quite entertaining, mm -hmm. oddly enough, in a sick way. <laughs> Stark being killed after he gets the injection of the lithium dioxide. And that was in Iron Man 2, as you pointed out. Thor by an arrow from Clint Barton. But it wasn't Clint. It was just, you know, Ant-Man just pushing it mm -hmm. in a different way or something. And then we get Clint dead instead <laughs> inside the prison. And, you know, we all know he wouldn't commit suicide based on his family and his love for them. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we get Hulk <laughs> getting imploded on the grounds of the university. Which was from the Edward Norton version of the Incredible Hulk when Sergeant Ross shows up. Okay. So that was that was weird cuz we we got Ross at that point. Yeah. But yeah, I I found it really cool and and it, it was fun to watch. Like I said in a sick way it was. Yeah. It's interesting to see it that way. 
Yeah, and I had a little bit about this in my. I'm going to switch this up because I'll, I'll go to my number three since you talked about Thor's Thor's death because that's kind of what my number three was uh, mm-hmm. was was Thor being killed by that arrow. And again, it was one of those things that, that as soon as it happened, I was like, "Huh? How 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 can he be killed by an arrow?" And then I remembered that when in Thor, he wasn't worthy. He wasn't able to to pick up Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That the hammer uh, until like towards the end of the movie, right? He has to actually. Uh, he had to work at it because yeah. it's what uh, Odin had done to him. Yeah, he had to earn. He had to earn the right to, to be able to pick up the hammer again, mm-hmm. and so he was just a normal Asgardian. He didn't have any special powers or or anything. So an arrow at that time and could have killed him. So really, it's it's something I think TV Podcast Industries pointed this out as well that even in the original Thor movie, that means that if Clint had shot him with an arrow, be, if anything had happened to him. Before yeah, he, he got, got shot with a gun or something. Yeah, yeah anything. He, could, he could, could have kill. been. He could have been killed. The stakes he was were really pretty much mortal. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Cool. So that would bring us to your number four because I flipped up my number four. Yeah, my number four. With the to add on to what you were saying, though, I, I really enjoyed the uh, episode for the the humor in it, especially mm-hmm. that scene with Thor and Coulson going. He has wonderful hair <laughs> what <laughs> yeah. say that again <laughs> it, to me, i was like i just love the humor within it especially with black widow too yeah the, the way we're, they were going about with her and how they didn't a lot of the shield agents didn't like her and how that uh, fury favored her that was interesting too my number four well that would be Loki came to earth right after thor was murdered so apparently he could sense things but you know, he just comes to take vengeance on the person that killed his brother. I just love the fact that we get, you know, Loki gets out because of it, it was one of the variants that we never got to see, I think. I, I don't think we ever saw this particular variant. So at least it's another story of Loki, if you think about it. Yeah, I had this I had this down lower in my notes as well about, about Loki. And just the fact that this Loki is a much darker yes he's character. more manipulative oh yeah he's even though at the beginning we kind of he kind of gets the the banter of um are you going to go ahead and get that you know with fury's cell phone ringing and but then tw- by by the time it gets to the end he gets he gets this dark turn to him that mm-hmm. we have not seen before nope. and I, the only thing i could i could point to was unless there's something else in this timeline that changed him maybe thor's death and i i think I think you're right. I think it, I don't think it was anything special. I think they know when they knew when Thor died. I think it was one of those things where, like, it's a cosmic thing. I think, yeah, you yeah, know? I think so too. Um, and that may have been what pushed him over the edge to make him, you well, know, darker and more evil. Well, if you think about it, in the first Avengers that we see him when he comes to Earth, he's literally there to take over the Earth. He tries to get a bunch of people under his power. He keeps telling them to bow to him. Well, now, finally, at the very end of this, he gets his way, and he's in control of Earth, and everybody is his pawn. He, 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 the governments will yield to him. Right. But in the, and, in the, in the Avengers, he was under Thanos' yes. thumb, though. So. Yes. He was under Thanos' thumb, but he would still have Earth. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was the only small difference within it. In this case, he's trying to be ultimately more powerful. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, things are getting so swapped around. Uh, so mine, <laughs> the next one I'll talk about is the fight scene. The fight scene between Black Widow and the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents in that back of that truck was just amazing. Like, it was, the animation in it was so cool. And I don't know, I don't think, I'm not sure if they could do it live action. Because, and I, like, and it was, I really paid attention to it because I did watch that same Rockstar's video that you're, you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and that move is so cool when she knees that guy with her right knee and then kicks <laughs> another guy and then kicks a third guy all in basically one motion while yeah. she's standing on her left foot. And then she shifts her, her balance to, to the, to the right was just like, Whoa. And I'm just like thinking, like I was thinking to myself, could they do that? Could a live action, they would have to do some kind of CGI thing or something for them or editing or something. Cause I don't know if anybody, if like a real human could do that, you know, yeah, the choreography would be crazy. Yeah. Scarlet would have to really work hard. And the one thing that would be a flaw is if somebody knows, notices that like taskmaster, they would take out her left foot. Right. Right. <laughs> or exactly. leg, yeah. you know? So what's your next one? Number three. 
Uh, that would be Fury working with Loki to get down to the culprit of the killings. Yeah. I thought this was a good way of investigating the episode. I really, it really intrigued me and got me really glued in to, hey, I really like this. Because I started watching it on my phone while I was at, on break at work. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I really want to finish this up. Yeah. So I did, and I watched it again when I came home. Yeah. But, you know, Fury is still working with Coulson and Fury to to get the information. They they have to get all this information. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Once he figured out who the who who it was, yeah. And and the nods to the movies itself, like Coulson's love for Cap, that that was uh, a pretty cool scene, I thought. He he goes, I heart <laughs> Captain yeah. uh, Steve Rogers, or was it? <laughs> uh, I think it was. If I remember correctly, let me see. If I got it. It's, I think it's I have it down hash, my... It's hashtag Steve, Steve, Steve. Uh, I heart Steve 0704. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that, that was pretty cool. And, and the little uh, nuances of like those things that come from those movies. So, uh, obviously, if you, you know, a lot of those people who are just watching these and they've never do dove into any of those movies they could easily go back and watch how it all came to be yeah i thought yeah. that was pretty cool um let's see so my next one that we haven't talked about yet is we talked a little bit about holt's death but we didn't really dive deep into it because it it really confused me and to a certain <laughs> extent it still kind of does confuse me um okay. but i love the editing also i want to talk about the editing of that scene between hulk's attack on ross's troops and loki's ice attack on the shield agents. It kept going back and forth and it was just the, the editing in that was just marvelous to me. Like I want to watch it again, just to, to watch that scene going back and forth. Yeah. But you know, there's that point where, where we think it's a gunshot or they think it's a gunshot. Obviously yeah. we find out at the end that it's not, it's that Hank was able to penetrate with, in his suit, he was able to penetrate Hulk's skin, which, yeah. okay, I guess if bullets, bullets don't bounce off him, bullets do hit him. You know, I, I get it. He can get into the bloodstream. He's mm -hmm. he's small enough. And then he, I guess he threw one of those enlarging things at, yep. at Hulk's heart. And then he got out before the enlarging thing caused Hulk to, it just, it, it's still. <sighs> you got to suspend your d disbelief a little bit with yeah. the, him getting inside the body. Now, obviously there are other ways. He could easily go into Hulk's mouth, go into his stomach and still do that. Right. He could have gone in through his ear. He could have gone. Yeah. There's a whole other ways that he could have. He he could have done that. So I, I I just think for the for the show itself, for them doing it like as a gunshot or making you know the audience think it was some it was kind a of gunshot. gunshot. Yeah, right. Uh, is that in the movie? Is that how they get him? Is somebody inadvertently shoots him? No, no. Okay. No. So at, at that point, when you see him on the campus and it's that bridge scene where they walk across the it's the glass bridge. Mm -hmm. They shoot up smoke guns or whatever it goes in there those canisters go oh and that's what makes him mad and he just gets angry turns okay. he jumps breaks through it he's on the grounds the tanks are all there they have these sound guns that are there they try to repel him and then blonsky comes out after he takes the super soldier serum that ross had given him and gets a, a good way but then you know he gets crushed but that's the only thing that they didn't really put in here you didn't see blonsky at all right right okay so what's your next one? Well, Fury meeting up with Hank Pym and finding out that he was the murderer all along. Mm -hmm. All of it pointed out that Hope was killed in action. So uh, that's the whole story of that. But Hank lost everything. His wife, his daughter. But he has, you know, Yellow Jacket's costume at this point. It makes me curious because uh, the Yellow Jacket was created by his uh, next in, I guess, command of his company, the one who was trying to take over in the original mm. Ant-Man movie. Right. So he developed this on his own. So apparently he made it better than that guy did. Right. But I, I just like that it kind of flip-flopped. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that now we have Hank as the antagonist. And the fight with Fury, or who we think is Fury at that point, because I think in the very beginning, because everything that Fury was saying is the only things that Fury would know. No, I no, I, no, I, this is, this is something I really keyed in on my second watch and it was in my notes is okay. his, his dialogue is very unfury like it's, he speaks a lot like Loki. And, yes. Um, and everything he says, and the only thing he says that I, I can, I, I can 
understand where you're going, but I think maybe Fury just gave him a little bit of information. That's what knowing, I thought too. Is is knowing what mission Hope died on? Because that's the only thing that that came out that was something only. But other than that, he says things like, "I don't care about these people." We know that's not true. We know we know Fury cares about his people. When he names off the Avengers, he says Anthony Stark. He doesn't oh. say Tony Stark. I really picked up on that in the, in the second watch that he says Anthony Stark and um, he says the full like the full names. That's um, pretty cool. Um, so there was a lot of things in there that he said. So the only thing I can guess is, is like we just said, is that Fury must have told him a little bit of information just in case Hank asked some questions or Hank said some things. That's that's a good so, catch. I like that. But yeah, there's a lot of that dialogue that I didn't notice Makes it the me first want to time. Go watch it again. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, I didn't notice it the first. It wasn't until the second watch that I went that I went. Oh, this is very unfury like yeah. things that he's saying. Yeah, yeah, so. you got that. That's cool. No, I thought it might have been, hey, he stood in there for the first, and then when he disappeared or whatever, Loki had done it, and then it was Loki taking over or something. Yeah, I don't I don't think so, so. But uh, when, you, when you said about, like, and I saw it, I was like, well, well, maybe he gave him information, but that's a lot to take. That's a lot of information last minute. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. especially, you know, it's like, I want to see your <laughs> your master or your... <laughs> no, no, that was Fury. No, that was Fury. Because that yeah. was when Fury. That was when Fury went to see. Yeah, he went to go see Loki. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, that was Fury. But yeah, yeah I know okay. that. I'm in, I, in. Okay, yeah, we're we're on the same page. Yeah, uh, I just like the fact that that you see Hank taken away by the Asgardian guard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I, I love that at the beginning when when Fury makes that, and it, it, obviously it's one of those things that that Loki doesn't know the colloquialisms of the world. When when Sam when uh, Fury says, "Well, you'll get your pound of flesh," and Loki's like, "Oh no, I'm going to get way more than a pound." I'm going right. to get the whole thing. Yeah, when know? he did. You got it. Uh, so I have no idea where we're at. All of my five points have been talked about. Um, so I'm going to jump into some of my notes uh, before we get to year number one, I think. Sure. Um, so uh, one of the things we saw is we – I don't think we've seen this in any of the other episodes. We saw kind of the silhouette or the shadow of the Watcher a couple of times. Yes. Uh, in Like in the skyline. Over the skyline, yep. Mm-hmm. And I don't yeah. think we've ever seen that in the episodes before. No, we haven't. It was so like I think, a, a shadowing. Yeah, that was very cool. I don't know if that's if that's telling us something that maybe he's getting closer to events or something, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see going forward to map that progress. Yeah. Well, my last one, just to, to throw it out there, obviously it's the last scene when we see Loki in charge of the world mm-hmm. and that all the leaders and the world bow before him. So basically, in a, in a, <laughs> nonetheless, he got what he wanted. Yeah. Pretty much most of what all the Lokis do. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what they want. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So some of my notes, let's see. Uh, we just kind of go back and forth. I know we both got a bunch of notes. Yeah. Is I, I love the voice actors that came back for this. I recognize that some of them didn't. But yes. I, I just love that we had Samuel L. Jackson. We got Clark Gregg. We got Mark Ruffalo. We got Jeremy Renner. We got Tom Huddleston. Uh, Jamie Alexander. And even Michael Douglas, which I thought was super cool. His, I didn't think that was him. I didn't check the credits. So. I did. I did I did a screenshot of the credits, and it is Michael Douglas. And I wow. think – I didn't catch it on the second watch, but I thought on the first watch that the very first credit that comes up is like special guest star Michael Douglas or oh, something. Because cool. I, I know they kept it till the end because I watched the opening credits mm-hmm. this time very closely to see if his name was in it. And yeah, I didn't I didn't see his name in it, but like I said, I did do a screenshot of of him because I watched it on my iPad the first time, and uh, and it was that was Michael Douglas, and he's he does such a great like he sounds just crazy paranoid manic. <laughs> it was it was a great great uh, portrayal I thought um, uh, from him. Hmm. The one thing I noticed was uh, the Betty Ross that we got looked a bit different to me. Obviously, mm-hmm. they made Banner look like Ruffalo, but the, you know, Betty Ross we got did not look anything like the Jennifer Connelly that we got in The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. So it was another way of them washing away Edward Norton from the yeah. Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. You know, she didn't even look like Liv Tyler at all. Yeah, too, not not well. really. I mean, not really. So Yeah, it was weird. Um, so the next one I got is I knew I knew that Widow was saying a name Black Widow was saying a name mm-hmm. when she said hope. When he said it's all about hope. Yeah, as uh, soon as I heard that, I was like, yep. 
<laughs> and also the closed caption, he had it capitalized. Uh, so I knew that it was a name. But my the problem for me is, again, like I said about the movies, I didn't know who Hope was. So I had no clue that it was. Oh, you didn't know it was Hope Van Dyne. Yeah, yeah. That they were talking about uh, the woman from Lost who's in Ant-Man and Ant- is now the Wasp. Um, Angelina Lilly? Yeah. Yeah, Angelina. That's it. Angelina Lilly. Yeah, and something like that. So I I, I just love that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my next one, Black Widow not being what S.H.I.E.L.D. agents think of someone that Fury would take mm-hmm. as an operative for an, or an Avenger. They didn't trust her, I guess, because, you know, she was Russian. She was from the Red Room. Yeah, yeah. So it was all the back behind the, you know, behind her back talk that we got to see. Right, right. Uh, I love seeing the, the, the pager come back up from Captain Marvel and I, I love seeing her at the end. That it was oh, and another one that was not did not return. That was not Brie Larson, no, uh, doing the voice. No, but it uh, I I love it's another one of those things that all that this all three of these episodes have left us at the end, which is what the what if comics were all about. Mm-hmm. They left us at the end like salivating. We we want to see more of this world. Yeah, and I would say probably ninety percent of the time we we never saw these worlds again. I think there was a couple of times that what if we'd go back to a previous what if timeline. Yeah. Was, and they would was, continue it. Yep. But it was very, very rare. So I know I would love for season two to pick up some of these stories later on. I would love to see, you know, the captain Marvel, captain America, mm-hmm. Nick Fury, agent Coulson version of the Avengers, whoever else they're able to get up to try to raise a, a revolt against Loki. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, if we're gonna the get fact it. that they actually gave a nod to that was pretty cool. Because, you know, they, they found Cap, they had him, and then, of course, he used mm-hmm. the beeper. Yeah. From and, Captain Marvel. And this was one of the things that kind of blew one of my theories that I was starting to work on over the weekend. Uh, I was kind of starting to think maybe all of these episodes of What If are in the same world. Hmm. But obviously, this one blows that completely out of the water because Loki takes over the Earth. Mm-hmm. And we have Captain America, not Captain Carter. So, yeah. But that was – I had I was starting to work on a theory where – where all of these episodes were going to be tied together as being the same world, you mm. know, but no, it's all right. <laughs> um, another, a note that I had was uh, the dots on Barton's head looked like something out of the predator when the shield agents thought that Barton killed Thor. Yeah. I've never, I've never seen a three pointed uh, sight laser sight like that. Yeah, I don't know, except for predators. I don't know yeah. what if that was what they were doing there or not. Um, the, the last thing I've got, the only other note I have is that, and I, I didn't think about it until the second watch, was why is there a coffin for Thor? <laughs> Wouldn't they have taken his body back to Asgard? Yeah, exactly. Like what he got, he wasn't officially a member of the Avengers. Yeah, it was weird. They had all their symbols <laughs> on their coffins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that hammer, by the way, is still on this world. Yeah, right? it's still sitting there in that what was it, the Mexico desert, yeah, uh, somewhere yeah. in a desert. Yeah. So, so that's another one of those threads that if they did uh, a sequel to this one, we would have to see like maybe if Captain America is able to pull that that mm. to hammer out of the ground. I don't know. We'll see if somebody's worthy enough. <laughs> All right. Well, I covered I think most of my notes. Okay. Yeah. So we got some quotes. Yeah. Uh, first one for me would be Coulson saying. I got visual on the intruder, and he's got really great hair. And then Fury's like, excuse me? (laughs) Coulson states, it's an accurate description, sir. He's gorgeous. Yeah, and one of mine was was Clint's line after that is, is Coulson wasn't lying about the hair. It's magnificent. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love that. Uh, and then Fury saying, it's weird, but I also have a space corpse that looks like a Chippendales dancer rotting on the next table over. And that and Coulson points out that Barton was on lockdown after Fury states that Barton has a wife and kids and wouldn't kill himself easily with the uh, cyanide capsules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my next one is, I know the speech at the beginning when, when Fury starts to repeat his Avengers initiative. Mm. speech that he gave to everybody i love it she stops him i know the speech so. <laughs> yeah that was in scarlett johansson but even still the person that did it was pretty cool i liked it uh last one for me would be colson saying sir the place is armed with bogeys fury goes earth colson goes no more like middle earth <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Uh, and then my last one is Coulson again. Even while rotting, he smells like lavender. <laughs> and they kept sniffing, both was, of them. Yeah, that was weird. That was weird. Um, I did not see any any feedback. I didn't, let me check. Neither did I. I didn't see anything. Okay, okay. I was going to say, I was going to check the Facebook post real quick, but I didn't see anything earlier today. Yeah. Well, the only news that we got this week, obviously, if you listeners, I, I know a lot of people don't like to be spoiled by trailers, but the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer or teaser trailer at that it's just a teaser trailer and gave us a little susant mm -hmm. a little piece of the pie a little little yeah. something mm -hmm. so that way we could salivate for another bunch of months till the movie comes out but i had to watch it but it didn't really give anything totally away it gave us an idea yeah it didn't really give anything away that hasn't been already kind of confirmed yeah, you know, um, and it didn't really. I, I mean, the other the other things that it kind of gave away is speculation about stuff. So really, yeah, and I've you know. heard a lot of people speculate. Oh, it's Mephisto. That's really not strange, and he's the one. And I was like, no, yeah, we'll no. See. <laughs> I was like, don't just let it. I'm just let like basically letting it sit so I could salivate on it more before we mm -hmm. get something. And that's not even a whole trailer at that. Exactly. So I, I can't wait to go see what that, that trailer gives us because they imply the other Spider-Men with, uh, with Doc Ock and then the pumpkin bomb and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that, especially the, uh, the banter between, you know, Strange and Peter. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, oh, you could call me, we, we, we saved the earth together. So he could call me my, my first name. Okay, Steven. He goes, that was awkward <laughs> or something like that something like that but i'll allow it or something like that I think. yeah yeah, yeah. it's cute it's yeah, cute which is funny yeah. but you could see that uh, it's weird because they're making it sound like that strange call caused the multiverse at this point because of the spell that he's putting on peter but we won't know that until we see that and dr strange in the multiverse of madness yeah again everything's speculation at this point. it is all speculation so pod podcast recommendations yeah. Yeah. I think I just interrupted you. I apologize. That's okay. Um, uh, the only one I've got this week really is I uh, is We Have to Go Back, Lost Revisited. We'll be returning in September. I'm so excited to have our Lost Rewatch uh, podcast, joint podcast between Podcastica and the Next Level Network returning in September. Uh, they've got a couple of my voicemails uh, in the can, so I'm a little ahead of them, but I'll be definitely listening and, and looking forward to uh, sending voicemails to them here in the next month. Cool. One that I would give out, uh, that would be Watched It in the 80s with Damien Vitale on the uh, Pyrocore Entertainment Network. I started listening a lot more going to deep dives. I hadn't really had a chance to listen to what Damien was up to, and I'm really enjoying his coverage. I've been listening for the past day and a half for the Family Ties coverage. So he, deep, uh, he dipped his toe into TV now a little bit, so he's going nice. to go back to more. I'm curious if he's going to go into some other shows that I uh, grew up on, too. Interesting. And I'll have to, I gotta pick that up. I haven't, haven't listened to any of those yet. And of course, we always highly recommend House Podcastica on the Podcastica Network and their coverage of What If, as well as TV Podcast Industries with their coverage of What and If. And as always, Strange Indeed, that I, again, I stepped over you again. I'm sorry, man. This tonight has not been a good recording for me. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as always, we recommend Strange Indeed, which is covering Sweet Tooth. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't have any YouTube recommendations, so. Okay. So, again, uh, for our, our just our normal boilerplate stuff that we always say every week, you are obviously listening to us on your podcast player of choice, but mm -hmm. we can be found on all the big ones out there, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. Uh, I'm not sure what are the one, new ones we're on, but uh, you can find us on all the major podcast players. If there's a chance to give us a rating, we would love to hear have a rating uh, from you. That always helps us out and always gives us a smile on our face. Uh, you can always send us... Feedback to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We have a website, which is being currently revamped, I think. Uh, so currently, it, does it still redirect you to the Facebook page? No, not no. yet. Okay, I, it's just I, under I, factor, I factor because I have to move. There's mm -hmm. a lot of packing still. Okay. I figure by October sometime, okay. I will have time dedicated on a weekend to sit solidly and do this and not be distracted. So... so We'll be working yeah. on that. Hopefully, by the end of October, we'll have a full website up. 
be on the lookout for our panels to pixels podcast.com website that should be out there soon yes. and as always you can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com and finally as always we have a youtube page our youtube page is panels to pixels podcast Please check it out. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to us. Uh, help us boost our numbers there on YouTube. It would be really super cool to have that exposure because I know that's a big exposure for us. So again, yeah. Panels to Pixels podcast on YouTube. And next week we will be coming covering episode four of What If, whatever that is. <laughs> what If something. <laughs> And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. There we cover action films, adventure films, uh, suspense films, thriller films, basically anything to get your adrenaline going. So I got a lot in the can. I'm going to be doing these bi-weekly till I settle down. But I think I already have six recordings already. So nice. I, I have a lot of editing to do and just to uh, upload them to you and get them out. I very, have to watch cool. my time when I have off so I could take care of everything. And I will say this, and I want to thank all of you listeners for being patient if an episode is a little late. I uh, believe the What If episode, uh, last week's What If episode that we covered showed up that night. Or the night that it, uh, the new one, you know, came on to Disney+. Plus. So I just want to thank you guys for uh, being patient and listening still. Very cool. And obviously, I... Uh... I did record finally for Wilhelm with Ben Beck uh, here, right here on the next level podcast network. And uh, you should be hearing that by the time you hear this, we were discussing uh, war movies. So cool. And we always like to have everybody go to the next level podcast network, the website and check out all the other podcasts that are on the network itself too. Cause they're Absolutely. fun to listen to. Very cool. All right. Well, that was our show, and I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Good night.